Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. We've got new details for you this evening on the Russian takeover of the U.S. government, the one you've been hearing about nonstop from every media outlet in America since Tuesday. Turns out it's a little more complicated than CNN initially told you. Remember that Russian lawyer that Donald Trump Jr. met with last summer? The one you've been told is likely a Kremlin spy sent directly by Vladimir Putin himself? Well, it turns out the Obama administration let her in. And not only let her in, but took pains to make certain she got here. Former Attorney General Loretta Lynch personally got involved in helping that lawyer come to the United States. Once here, the lawyer slash spy slash diabolical hacker of democracy didn't just meet with Donald Trump Jr. She also sat in on a congressional hearing. She lobbied on behalf of her government. She went to events around Washington, including a dinner attended by at least one member of Congress, who for the record is not named Trump. In other words, the story is considerably more complex than you may have heard. But don't tell Time Magazine that. To Time Magazine, it is a simple crime tale. In fact, it's O.J. Simpson 20 years later with Don Trump in the white Bronco. Here's their latest cover. Red-handed. That's all you need to know. Later in the show, we'll talk to Cato Kalin about his thoughts on Russia. Just kidding. But here's the part that is not funny. Russia isn't just a partisan talking point in D.C. It's an actual country, a world power with massive energy reserves and a nuclear arsenal. For a hundred years, we've had a nuanced relationship with the Russian government, despite appearances sometimes. And we've done that because we had to do it, because it was in our best interest. Not anymore. Thanks to the hysteria over Trump's election, Russia is now the single most evil country in the history of the world. According to Democrats, even speaking to Russians is a crime, a betrayal of America. The country that attacked us in the 2016 elections, you can't go into business with them. It's, it is truly like, you know, working with the Japanese after Pearl Harbor to, you know, defend Hawaii. I'm questioning the patriotism of all of those Republicans who are allowing this president to side with Putin, to wrap his arms around Putin. Republicans in Congress have become enablers of the Trump-Russia assault on our democracy. Questioning their patriotism? Didn't liberals used to accuse conservatives of doing that very thing? Remember? Until they started their own Red Scare and started doing it themselves. Since then, it has been a flat-out hyperbole contest, with the award going to the participant with the most florid and ludicrous analogies. Nazi comparisons, of course, usually win. He assassinates dissidents and journalists. He bombs women and children on purpose in Syria. He is as bad as Hitler. Okay, so a lot of otherwise sober people in Washington have completely lost their minds and are saying things they will hopefully cringe in embarrassment over later. But what's the cost of this hysteria to America right now? We still have a world to run. How much harder is this making it?